Now, the second of two programmes in which John Bishop plays church organs by Father Willis in the county of Devon. He's playing music by Mendelssohn on the organ of Totnes Parish Church. The church is at the top end of the town, just off the main street, and the organ is where it should be, moved back to its original position in a gallery at the west end, so that it can speak straight down the body of the church. John, when was this instrument built? built in 1861, ten years after the Great Exhibition, at a period when Willis was still very much looking backwards in one respect to the classical English tradition of chorus work, but also combining it with some new and quite striking orchestral, inverted commas, effects derived from the French school. In the form of the work of Cavalli Cole. Indeed. And what departments of the organ would that show particularly? It would show in individual ranks, the reeds especially. So here at Totnes in the two great reeds, the trumpet and the clarion, and in the swell reeds too. With this French influence then, why do you find it an appropriate instrument for Mendelssohn? Because, interestingly enough, although Mendelssohn was writing well before the great period of Cavalli Carl and the symphonic organ, quite a lot of Mendelssohn's organ music needs both effective, clear choruses and orchestral coloration as well. So much of his writing, particularly in the sonatas, is conceived orchestrally and is thought of in terms of an orchestral palette. Although perhaps that's not true of the piece that you're beginning with, the Prelude and Fugue in D minor, which certainly isn't drawing room Mendelssohn either. It's powerful stuff, this demanding virtuoso approach, really, in the Prelude. A pianistic undertone here, one feels the organ being treated in a new, almost revolutionary way against the background of the time. A fugue which is powerful, driving, the whole thing, I think, representing a vitality and indeed an angst too, which is sometimes not recognised. But with an underlying sound contrapuntal technique. Absolutely. Well, let's hear it then. The Prelude and Fugue, number three in D minor by Mendelssohn.
John Bishop was playing the Prelude and Fugue No. 3 in D minor by Mendelssohn. John, this instrument at Totnes was altogether smaller when built than the one which you played last week at Great Torrington. Willis conceived this organ and he built it as a two-manual instrument. The third manual was added later by another firm. And in size, and to some extent in tonal quality, it would have been very much more like the English instruments which Mendelssohn knew on his visits to this country, those by Hill. So what stops, for instance, would you expect to find on an instrument like this that would characterise it? The main choruses, the main diapason choruses here at Totnes are very much more traditional than at Torrington and suit Mendelssohn very well. What we also have here, of course, at Totnes, as at Torrington, the colourful sounds of stops from the French tradition providing orchestral effects and indeed Mendelssohn needs those effects from time to time, especially in the sonatas. And of course with this instrument there's something which is very important to the player, which is the action itself. This one has a mechanical action. How did that affect things? The Willis mechanical action has been restored here at Totnes. It makes life for the player very much easier. The textures are marvellously clear not only because of the voicing of the stops, but because of the control by the player. And the player controls not only the keys very much more easily, but he also controls the pipes because of the direct contact with them. Time for some more Mendelssohn now then. This Andante that you're going to play next, John, sounds like the side of Mendelssohn, which was cloned a thousand times in the last century. But the strange thing is that it wasn't published until years after Mendelssohn's death, so this piece itself can't actually be held responsible for any imitation. Yes, it's very much within the Songs Without Words tradition. But I believe it to be, although simple, not naive. The difficulty is, I think, that we've had so many performances of pieces of this kind which have been sentimentalised and trivialised that the original freshness of the music has been lost. What I've tried to do in this performance is to get back behind those performances and to approach the music, as it were, with unclouded eyes. So you see it as a piece definitely to be taken seriously? Certainly to be taken seriously and not to be diminished in stature. Let's listen to it then. An Andante with Variations by Mendelssohn.
and Dante with Variations by Mendelssohn, sent to the publisher in the parcel of music which also contained the organ sonatas, of which John Bishop is going to play the first. Although this was not the first of the sonatas to be written, in fact, it is a strikingly original work, I believe. Difficult for us to imagine now quite how revolutionary it must have sounded uh, at the time of its composition or of its first performance. I think Mendelssohn had an ear for new effects possible on the organ. He must have really known the instrument. He must have known what was possible on it. Indeed. Well, of hmm. course, he was an organist and he was one of the first, possibly the first composer to approach the organ against a classical training, a training in Baroque counterpoint, but with an ear for new orchestral effects. Well, that's it, isn't it? There are dramatic effects making use of the different manuals in this sonata, which seem to me to be entirely original. I can't think of any model for them. I agree entirely. So that, for example, in the first movement, we have a contrapuntal outworking on the great chorus, with Bach not so far over the shoulder, as it were, combined with a chorale treated in an orchestral effect soft brass. The combination of the two is not only impressive, it is quite striking in its originality. It's music operating on two levels Absolutely. in juxtaposition. Absolutely. And then in the second movement we have a piano song without words in effect. In the third movement, the recitative, a strikingly original conception, soft woodwind imitative writing on the swell being juxtaposed with strong brass chords on the grate, leading via a remarkable transition, the sort of transition at which Mendelssohn was so good, to the finale, a toccata, very pianistic, virtuosic and exciting. And firmly in F major to end the sonata which begins resolutely in F minor.
the Sonata No. 1 in F, minor then major, by Mendelssohn. John Bishop was playing the organ at Totnes Parish Church, ending this second programme in which he played a Father Willis organ in the county of Devon. John, did you come away with any fresh impressions of the skill of Father Willis? I'm not sure about fresh impressions. Affirmations, maybe. Affirmations of his ability to build, certainly in this period, with colour and with a real sense of vitality for both the instruments at Torrington and at Totnes reflect those qualities. Torrington may be rather more upfront, rather more brash, a concert organ, an organ designed for lusty free church congregational singing. Totnes perhaps slightly more respectable very much more in accord with the temper of the Anglican communion for which the instrument was built. But both instruments, nonetheless, having a great deal of excitement, of vitality, and that marvellous colour which characterises all his great organs. So, although he was a builder who knew his own mind, who could produce distinctive instruments, it does look as if he was able to modify his basic designs with different customers in mind. Yes, I'm sure that's true. Perhaps an even more important point is the fact that Willis was a player himself. And here, as in all his great organs, we have examples of instruments built by a player Four players. Ian Carson introduced the second of two programmes in which John Bishop played church organs built for Devon churches in the 1860s by Father Willis. <laughs> 